Hello students, we are going to discuss Insta number 14. So the question is, which diagram best describe the relationship between ventilation and the oxygen tension when the oxygen is changes acutely from 0 to 160 millimeter of mercury, keeping the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and H plus ion constant. So if I decrease the oxygen, that means there is production of hypoxia. And we know hypoxia is a stimulus for peripheral chemoreceptor. But if you plot the curve between this decrease in oxygen and ventilation, then it will look like this. So suppose this is the partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood and this is the ventilation. So what is going to happen? Suppose this is 160 millimeter of mercury partial pressure. This is 100 millimeter of mercury partial pressure of oxygen. This is 60 millimeter of mercury partial pressure of oxygen. If the partial pressure of oxygen is changing from 160 to 100 or partial pressure of oxygen is above 100, it is not going to stimulate your ventilation or it is not going to depress your ventilation. So almost I will get a flat kind of line like this, right. Then if I decrease the oxygen tension further, if I decrease the partial pressure of oxygen further, what I am going to see, I am going to see that the ventilation is rising but in a slow manner. But whenever your partial pressure of oxygen is below 60 millimeter of mercury, it suddenly rises the ventilation in a steeper pattern. That means I can find out the relationship between hypoxia and rise in ventilation is not linear like this. It is not like this. It is following a curve pattern. Why this curve pattern or why the ventilation rises maximally when the hypoxia or when the partial pressure is beyond or below 60 millimeter of mercury. Could you think of anything? So, whenever the partial pressure is uh, decreased from 60 millimeter up to uh, sorry 100 millimeter of mercury to 60 millimeter of mercury partial pressure, what is happening? It is producing hypoxia, right? So, hypoxia is stimulating your ventilation by stimulating your peripheral chemoreceptor. But simultaneously, because of hypoxia, what is happening? There is more and more deoxy hemoglobin formation is also occurring because partial pressure of oxygen is less means deoxyhemoglobin is more. More the deoxyhemoglobin means you know deoxyhemoglobin is a kind of alkali in comparison to oxyhemoglobin. So oxyhemoglobin is a strong acid, deoxyhemoglobin is a less strong acid. So this deoxyhemoglobin I can understand like this that it is a kind of alkali. So you know that alkalosis has suppression or inhibition effect on this peripheral chemoreceptor. So hypoxia is stimulating and this deoxyhemoglobin is inhibiting the peripheral chemoreceptor. Because of the balance of this, what will happen? The ventilation is not rising significantly when the partial pressure of oxygen is above 60 millimeter of mercury. But whenever the partial pressure of oxygen is below 60 millimeter of mercury, the stimulation by this hypoxia is so much high that it overcomes the inhibitory effect of deoxyhemoglobin. Ready my point? Apart from this deoxyhemoglobin mediated inhibition, there is another reason also. You know that? See, whenever there is hypoxia, it is stimulating peripheral chemoreceptor. Peripheral chemoreceptor stimulation means there will be rise in ventilation. Ventilation rise means what will happen? You are going to wash out the carbon dioxide from the body. If you wash out the carbon dioxide from the body, what is going to happen? Again, there will be little alkalosis and this alkalosis is going to inhibit the ventilation. So this kind of inhibition is going on when the hypoxia is growing on more and more. But whenever the hypoxia is below or less than 60 millimeter of mercury, then the stimulation to ventilation is so strong that this inhibitory effect is negligible. That's why answer of this question is nothing but option number C, C and C. Got it student?